Hey guys, welcome back to my old tractor shed. I'm looking at this hydraulic valve today, trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do. Um, definitely need a couple of new rubber bell, uh, boots here, or dust protectors or whatever, and some ceiling washers. Uh, I need to go town one day next week, not too far off, and I want to try and get this apart and possibly bring, bring a few pieces into the hydraulic shop and see what I can find. I'm going to make a, a couple changes. Uh, you can see there's a couple of hoses on here. Um, that's not original, I do not believe. Um, there's a YouTube channel that I've been watching a little bit. I believe it's somebody from Great Britain. Um, I'll put a link below. It's called The uh, Incredible John Deere, I believe is what he calls the channel. And uh, goes to tractor shows and different places, whatever. Just takes video of John Deere tractors. And there's a couple of videos he has of the 710. I think he's got a 510. There's, there's three or four different videos where he just walks around the tractor and nice and slow, nice close up, good, he does a good job. And I've seen a couple, they don't have hoses like this. Uh, I believe these two little pipes here are actually turned down and then there'd be a bracket, I believe it's gonna bolt on to the top of the hydraulic cover or rock shaft cover, or whatever. I've been looking through the parts book and I do see that bracket. Mine of course doesn't have that. Um, I'm going to go and re-look at those videos a little bit, but I think I'm going to try and do that. I've already said this a couple times, guys. This tractor is never going back to work. It's going to be a, a parade tractor at best, so I'll probably never even need the live hydraulics, but I obviously want to fix these rubber boots. Um, initially, I was trying to get it apart at this end. There are a little tiny spring clip that, that actually pushes in from this way and then goes over. I have taken a drill. This one here is missing. And I just very carefully went through to make sure that there wasn't a piece in there, whatever, maybe some dirt or something in there. And then I've tried for a few minutes here with a little pry bar, get this off. I feel they should just pop off, but I don't want to go nuts. I, I can probably find replacements for those, although this is almost certainly going to be metric. Um, might not be too easy to find those here. So I'm changing my approach here. I'm going to take that little sir clip off right there and get rid of this bracket just to make it a little easier to move. And then I think I'm going to take it over to the vise and I'm going to get rid of these, these two lines, which are the hoses and stuff. But let's get this little uh, sir clip off here first. I'm trying to make sure I'm in view of the camera and fiddle about here at the same time. <laughs> okay, I get that off. Got my little computer. There's a washer there, of course. Oh, I got that there to deal with. All right, I, th I thought by getting rid of that circlip I could make this a little bit easier, but I've also got this one to deal with. Okay, I've actually only been trying to get that top one off. Let me try. Ah, oh, dear. Okay. Better glasses. I can see this one. This one here, it's not even put in correctly. This should have went through those little holes there. <sighs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, let me just see. <laughs> it came off. Oh, I heard it go tick. So now we're going to spend the rest of the day looking for a little wee tiny spring clip, but that's all right. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I would have thought once you took that little clip off that uh, oh, I've got to zoom this out, guys. We're not. We're not getting in the view here at all. Um, that you could just take a pry bar and, and pop these off, but that one there wasn't put in correctly. No, oh, this one here could thread apart. I could thread that apart. Just I'm just trying to get rid of this big clunky piece that I'm not going to have to. And see that one there. Where is that? That one there is also. That one there is also not put in right. It should be. It, it, it should have gone 
into that little hole right there and it's just sitting on the back side of it. I thought these little springs, when they went through that little hole, that uh, that's what stopped the ball from coming out of the socket. But clearly it doesn't because that's not even in. Let's try not to lose this one. So, so that's them there. Uh, you know, this, this piece here goes through the little socket and ball and then that just retains it. Um, so there's one of those on the floor here somewhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Success. <sighs> All right. I don't want to break these. And you can't thread the ball out of this block, which I certain it was supposed to, because I can see thread right there, but it's welded. Oh, somebody's done me so many favors. All right, we're moving on to plan B. So plan B is, I'm gonna mark these. I've already marked the one just, so that's number one. This is gonna be number two. And this last one will be number three. And there are ceiling washers in between there. I've already taken the, the three off this outside. I'm gonna get rid of these two bolts which should get rid of that, catch my uh, ceiling rings, and then I'm gonna put these two blocks into the vise and get rid of these two lines and break these free, and then I'm gonna see if I can get this apart here. Where these rods with the rubber boots go into, uh, inside here, this all pivots. It looks, looking at the book, there's a couple of roll pins there. Um, and I think I need to take this valve completely apart I uh, don't think there's much in there for seals. There's a couple of spools, of course, and there's going to be some dirt in there. So I'd like to try and get this apart and clean it. Uh, if I can't get that other end apart, if I get it apart here, I'll be able to get these rubber boots off that way. And then I'm going to have to talk to a couple buddies about these things on the end. But I may not need to get them apart. <sighs> Let's take that bolt out. This is... Uh, that bolt out so now this will come away that's that's fine that's got that extra hydraulic line on we're just gonna and there's where's, where's our camera there's three ceiling there's a ceiling two a big one here and two little ones there looking in the, the part numbers they're all the same so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take three of those or I'm gonna take those with me and go to town uh, so yeah this here <laughs> See, so it'd be nice if I had to get rid of all that baggage on the end. I'm going to have to keep these together. And then I'll use a couple pieces of wood and get this in the vise and see if I can get rid of these hoses. That's going to make my life easier. And then loosen these two caps on the end. There's a, there's a few pieces inside there. There's a, some springs and washers and whatnot. Uh, clearly, those springs are setting some kind of return pressure or back pressure or something or other. So... Let me, uh, I'm going to get rid of these ceiling rings so I don't lose them. Take them out of here. And put them in my little thing. Looking at the part numbers, these are all the same, so I'm not too worried about these. They don't look like, they're like a rubber washer. They're not O-rings. So, uh, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a rag and clean this before I do this, and then I'll uh, get them in the vise with some plywood and then I'll move these cameras and I'll bring you back. Give me a minute. All right, this should be pretty straightforward. It shouldn't be too, oh, that one over there is even loose. Just moved on me before I even touch it. I guess it's hydraulic line, right? All right. Okay, I'm going to try and reposition this to get these two uh, 
and nuts, locking things, whatever, to have the springs behind them. I'm going to reposition this and try and get those loose. There she goes. They are tight. Okay. Let's go back to the other, take these back to the other table. Well, these uh, caps on the end were awful snug. I would not have got it apart here. Um, okay, I'm going to try, take this off and see if that spool will come out. Looking at the parts manual, Uh, in behind here, there's a couple washers, a spring, and number seven, I'll include that picture. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, I don't want to insult my German friends. Uh, translated on Google, says locking ring. So there may be something in there that prevents the spool from going out, or that number seven locking ring may just keep the spring in those two washers no, to two number fives and the number six, that locking ring may just simply hold those onto the spool. So I'm not 100% sure what's, uh, what's in there. Only one way to find out though, take it off. These, I've already checked a couple of them. These aren't that tight. At least, although that one I can't get on because of the rubber boot. Yeah. Guess we're gonna have to If it was rubber, it certainly is not much left of it. It's that is that is hard as a rock. So that's what I need to change uh, for my paws. Okay, let's see if we can get these out. Yeah. All right, I'm pulling, and uh, actually I, I feel it on a spring. So my guess would be, we gotta get, we gotta get in here, and probably that, uh, that number seven, because I, I can feel spring pressure when I'm pulling it. So, there's a ceiling ring there. I'm gonna move some of my junk here, guys. I already got myself a clean rag just to kind of lay pieces out in order and move the parts manual a little closer just so I can kind of keep an eye on. It's not a huge amount of parts in here, but I still want to keep some kind of an eye on it. Now, that spring, I think that spring is caged and I'm sure that's what I'm going to have to remove. It should be on the inside of this. Number eight, number nine, 13 is a copper. Yeah, so there's a copper ceiling ring on there. That's number 13. Number eight. Number eight and number nine. There's nut number 12, a little threaded thing, number 11. This is number 10. Um, I'm thinking this, this, there's a washer right there and there's gonna be a little weak clip of some kind. I'm gonna put my better glasses on. That's gonna be, well, the spring is number six. The washer's number five, but there's eight and nine. I'm just quickly going to go and clean this in the parts washer and uh, maybe get a magnet. I think there should be something else in there. Because you know what? 
When I put this on like this, I look at the, I'm looking at where this is to where this number 11, I think there should be something in there that pushes against that. This is probably an adjustment for something for your hydraulics. Once again, I got a sneaky suspicion someone's been in here and they've lost eight and nine. But let me go and wash this real quick. No, no, you know what, the way I don't see. Let me wash this so we can be sure. All right, I cleaned it up in the parts washer. That copper ceiling ring 13 comes off there, but. I'm pretty certain this number eight is down in there because I can't see, I can't see the end of this threaded number 11. And when I'm looking at the picture here, number eight, it doesn't look hollow. It looks like a, it does look like some kind of a plug, but I'm gonna try tapping it on the uh, vice. doesn't seem to want to move. Um, I can probably take this knot and threaded thing off after and maybe see if I can punch that. But I don't think I'm going to do that for now. I don't think that's not my problem at hand here. I need to get into here. Uh, better glasses. Yeah. I don't know if I can take it off with these snap ring pliers. bad at all. Okay, so there's the washer. That's uh, number five and the little clip number seven. And there's our spring and should be should be another washer here. That, that magnet's too big. It's too big as well. All right. Once I get the, uh, once I pull this piston through, I'm sure I can get that. I think. Just seal there. So maybe may not have got as much dirt inside here as I thought. And there we are. Um, there's our other washer. Little film of oil holding it. That goes there. I would bet you, I would bet you, I would bet you that there isn't too much else in there. But for now, I'm just gonna lay that there. I'm gonna go to another clean rag and clean this up. Now, This isn't, this isn't as bad as I thought, but somehow, uh, look at the pictures here a bit more. Okay, so what it looks like I gotta do is there's a roll pin, but it's underneath here. It's in the end of this shaft. Uh, this shaft here has a skinny piece. Uh, where's my picture? Yeah, number 16. You can see at the end of it there where it goes into part 18, there's a little hole. And then if you look way over, the number 17 is the pin I'm going after. I think if I can get this free and I can slide this up, I think I'll be in good shape. I could probably just cut this, eh? It really isn't much good the way it is. Of course, I go from a blunt screwdriver to a sharp knife, but oh well.
hopefully, hopefully I bring this to the hydraulic shop. They can help me out. Okay, so let's move this up. There's our pin right there. Um, If you can see it right where my finger is. It's mushroomed here on the top, so that's the way it went in last time. So it's going to go back out this way. Let me find a little punch. All right, I got a small punch and I got a little block of iron with a couple of holes in it that should be, well, not quite, I guess. Uh, what can I do here? Well, we can do that, I guess. Not really, not really what I want. Let me find something different. Once again, socket. That on there, and then just see. So that's moving back. little devil. I think this punch is too big. Must find. I think we're heading into drill bit territory here. Need a smaller punch. No, that ain't gonna work. I could grab that I guess, but I could try and grab that. I'm gonna end up uh, potentially buggering up this little pin. I'd like to have this piece with me and this rubber boot so we can find something that fits on there. The, the end for the shaft should be just fine. If I take that and take this with me and then take those seals with me. Uh, yeah, I don't think that'll go past. Oh, it does. All right, that's an option. I could, uh, where's my camera? I'm, all, I'm out of view of the camera. So I'm just thinking about plan C or D here, as opposed to trying to get that pin out and buggering up the pin, this piece does slide past this crook. I could loosen that jam nut and, and uh, I could thread this arm out of that ball and socket to get this off. And then I could put new rubber boot on from that and I don't have to get that pin out. You know, you always go along. My, my, my approach to this kind of stuff is you always move along until you feel you're going to do some damage and then you move on to the next least dangerous thing. I could potentially catch the end of, of this, this camera zoomed in too far. I could catch the end of that pin with a pair of vice grips and try and take it out to get this apart. Well, then you know what? I don't even know. So, okay, so that's in a ball in there. But even once I get this little pin out, who's to say that that shaft isn't seized inside the hydraulic spool? And there's no way in hell I'm putting heat on that. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, instead of, I'll give that pin a rest. And I can take it apart. I can try and take it apart at this end instead to get this piece off. <sighs> Making this up as I go, guys. You should know that by now. All right. Set that aside. Okay, I'm going to try and do this with a wrench and a pair of vice grips so I don't have to uh, go back to the vice and reposition the cameras and everything again. i just see if I, if I can get it to come off without heat. Well, that would be wonderful. The nut is free. Oh, but it's turning the whole thing. Let me get another pair of vice grips. Let's try again. Yeah, okay. The nut is free. Just back that off a couple turns and then see if this will thread out of the, and it will.
Okay. And then we have to, maybe? <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it might have slid over the nut. All right, so we have to take the nut off. That is as far as I need to take this apart. I can now bring this disintegrated rubber boot and I have this to try and find a rubber boot that of course will fit onto it. Um, I can, I'll bring this with me, that's no big deal. I've got to find a rubber boot that fits uh, snug on there. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, I'm getting a pile of parts here. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll get this other one up. Actually, you know what, I'm not going to because that's exactly the same but I'm just gonna leave all this sit here for now. Um, you know what time it is, it's coffee time. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a few photographs of a few things, but I don't need this part of my shop for a little while. And uh, I'll go visit my friendly hydraulic shop and see what I can find. So anyhow, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for hanging out in the shop with me. We'll see you next time in my old tractor shed. Ciao.